I really like this, uh, this morning start where we have time. Did you see a little change? We have time with the speakers. We have more time. And, uh, and also, I really like to see all my friends here so close. So that's nice. Again, if you want to sit that close, you can. And we'll have a lot of Q&A going on with uh, Guy right now. So next up is uh, Guy Kawasaki that I, I really wanted to come to the web for many years. And uh, it, it, took, it took me some time because he's a very busy guy, as you know. He's uh, a, a previous, a former executive at Apple. He helps Motorola now. He's an author. Uh, he's going to do a book signing here, by the way. And uh, we'll have a great conversation with him uh, that, uh, that will hopefully be uh, as interactive as possible. So, Guy, would you like to join me on stage? Guy Kawasaki. Welcome, they were, guy. They were holding me back. Yes, I know they do that. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for inviting me. I'm honored to be here. No, of course. Um, it's been it's been a long time we've been wanting to do to do this. So it's uh, this this is a great uh, great opportunity. So, guy, here's uh, what I like to do. We we should start together and then try to get as many questions as we can. I have a microphone here. Okay. And uh, and and see how. Uh, how, um, how, how we can uh, get everybody to interact as much as possible. Guy, the theme is the next 10 years. Oh, uh. <laughs> so could you take your uh, crystal ball and, uh, and, and share with us what you think? Maybe we, maybe we can start with the past. That's easy. With the past. So in the last 10 years, there was no Facebook, no Twitter, right. no social. Well, if you look at the past, you'd have to say that it is impossible to predict the future because... You know, a few years ago, everybody was predicting that MySpace would be the operating system of the Internet. True. It didn't exactly get there. Um, Facebook may be close to being the inter operating system of the Internet. Who would have predicted that? Uh, seven or eight years ago, you know, if, if you were a potential investor in Twitter, you probably would have said to them, why do we need Twitter? I mean, who cares if your cat rolled over, right? Who cares if the line at Starbucks is long? Haven't you ever heard of email and SMS and IRC? So why would you invest in Twitter? So if you look at those things and... And now it's only worth 20 billion. <laughs> and, and then you look at my checkered past at Apple. I mean, who would have thought that Apple would become the most valuable company in the world? So if you look at these things over and over again, you have to conclude that it is impossible to predict the future. Ten years is truly impossible. Ten months, maybe. So I never do these things because I just, I, I want to leave some doubt in people's minds that I'm stupid, but if I go and make these predictions, I will leave no doubt. <laughs> and so it's, sometimes it's better to shut up and make no predictions. Uh, I, I Let's think it's talk about a few impossible. that are going on or a few trends that already um, okay. has set the stage very well, I think. So Bitcoin. What do you think about Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a lovely idea. I, I, the, the fact that it is just out of control of Goldman Sachs just makes me so happy. I mean, that, that alone, um, if we can just get away from Wall Street, subvert Wall Street, I think it's a good thing. I mean, uh, away from governments, too? You can buy weapons and, all of uh, the above. I hope and I can, drugs and everything with it, right? Yeah, but, you know, that's like saying we shouldn't have an Internet because there's porn on it. I mean, you, you enjoy know, it. Porn or yeah, the internet? Porn. <laughs> no, not at all, actually. But so I think in any of these enabling technologies, you know, a lot of Cisco routers are used for porn, right? I mean, in any of these enabling technologies, some is going to be used for good, some is bad, but that's still better than not having it. So I say let it rip. But do you think it's credible that we'll have a currency that is not government controlled? Arguably, it's more <laughs> reliable. Uh, yes, I think, it, you think? I think it can happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like Napster was the first version of a new music service. Right. And that was illegal. And then we made it Spotify and Deezer it, it, and iTunes. It but can happen. And, you know, eventually we had iTunes, which was totally controlled, right? And so I think it can happen. Um, I, I must admit, I don't know enough about banking law and international finance, but... Uh, I could sense that you know, there's, there's a revolution there brewing. That's a good thing. Tell me about social. You are a social powerhouse <laughs> yourself. <laughs> like if you follow 
at Guy Kawasaki, right? Uh, yes. Um, you will have a lot of information. You will have a and lot so of information. So you either don't sleep at all, or you have a team managing that for you. Or is it a bot? It's both. It's a robot? Uh, no, 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 it's both. I work very hard and I have a team. Uh, my approach to social media is very different from most social media experts. I use the word experts very loosely. Uh, for me, social media is a platform. It's a marketing platform. It is a means to an end. Uh, it is not a way for me to get more friends or make more relationships. You know, I'm happily married. I have four children. I don't want any more friends. I can't handle any more friends. I don't want to be your friend, okay? Uh, and I admit that freely, clearly, up front. I wonder if there is a pattern with successful people. We had Karl Lagerfeld here last year. You know what he said to what? me? I think backstage. He said uh, it was a very fun Q&A. And he said, yeah, I never, you know, I never fly commercial. I only fly private. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I get it. It's, it's nicer. It's, uh, no, it's because I just want to meet no one. I can relate to that, except <laughs> the part about flying private. Yeah. Um, if, you, if, if I didn't know you... In the next you, 10 years, we'll fly you private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, <laughs> if I didn't know you and we were sitting together on an airplane, I would literally not say one word to you in 10 hours. Is that my haircut? Or? No, no, no. I mean, especially if you were in Google Class, I would not say anything. <laughs> to you. Um, but, but back to your question. So let me explain my whole social media thing, okay? Because it's been vastly misunderstood. So as I said, social media for me is a means to an end. It's a building a platform. Now, having said that, um, I embrace what I call the NPR model, the public radio model. And NPR in the United States provides great content, 365 days a year. Wait, wait, don't tell me, This American Life, uh, Fresh Air, all this great stuff. And so they provide this 365 days a year, and they earn the privilege of then running the telethon to, to raise funds. Now, if they did not have such great content all year, no one would toler tolerate the telethon. And so my model is I provide as much great content. I am constantly curating. I have people who work for me who curate. I'm constantly providing great content so that when I want to run Guy's Telethon, I have earned that right. But you could... Oh, that's interesting. But, uh, because the point is you could be calling it something like, I don't know, the next web or TechCrunch or, you know, and not Guy Kawasaki. Is that your ego here or? No, it's not my ego. That, I mean, that is my brand. You have your brand, Le Web, and, you know, there's TechCrunch, but that's, that's just who I am. And so I'm constantly trying to provide great content so that when I publish a book, I can promote that book. When I when I invest in a company, when I advise, like when I'm an advisor to Evernote, and so when Evernote comes out with this great wireless scanner, there's next. There's next, right? Great wireless scanner. I promote that scanner. Um, one of my favorite social media products of all is Buffer, because Buffer enables me to schedule posts to LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus. So right now I'm nine hours ahead of most of my readers, but I can buffer things so that they will post that. 8 a.m. Pacific. But don't you lose kind of the interactivity with that? That you're like you've already pre-posted nine hours of uh, your post. No. But I'm do not. you read the mentions? Do you reply? I, yourself? I, re I read the comments. Um, whenever someone replies as Guy Kawasaki, it really is Guy Kawasaki. No one re responds for me, but people do post as me, particularly in Twitter, and so all the responses are me, and so. Um, my model, again, is NPR. I want to earn the right to promote by providing great curation. That's my model. And very few people agree with that model. Um, one of the other consequences of this model because is... Because, yeah, you post many times too, right? Yes. I, do you still do that? In Twitter, most of my tweets are repeated four times, eight hours apart. And if you told that to who social... Do, who, who, do, who thinks it's, it's okay to do this, like posting four times... Oh, see, a year ago, everybody would have said not at all. Well, you had only 10 people. Like, uh, who thinks it's not cool to post four times? On <laughs> <laughs> who of you have gaining followers? <laughs> um, so here, here's my theory Just behind it. Just challenging that. you, okay. little guy. So okay, feel free. It's your conference. Um, <laughs> so so I, I post 
most of my tweets go out four times, eight hours apart, and it's because I do not believe that everybody who the tweet is relevant to is awake and at the computer at the moment that I tweet it. And even I am not so arrogant as to believe people are going to scroll back through mm. tweets, thousands of tweets, to find that pearl of a tweet that I posted. And so if you look at CNN, if you look at NPR, if you look at ESPN, if you look at all these channels, they repeat their stories. It's because you can't assume that everybody who's interested in the thing is awake and at the computer at the same time. And I can prove to you that, you know, if I tweet once, I get X clicks. And if I tweet four times, I get four X clicks. So guess what? <laughs> Um, and, and so, okay, so now, you know, the vast majority of you think this is wrong, but I will tell you, I mean, let me put it to you another way. Would you like to increase clicks by four times? How many of you who had your hands up are now, you know, changing your mind? Because it is literally 4X. Now, you will piss some people off with this. I grant you that. But at any given point on social media, somebody's always pissed off with you, right? And, and I, I could make the case that if you're not pissing people off on social media, you're probably not using it hard enough. You should be pissing people off. Um, oh, trust me, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we should take some questions. Anyone has a question? Uh, yeah, here, okay, great, awesome. So that's what I wanted to do for a long time. Here. Um, I was just wondering, what's the limit then? Why four times, why, why not eight times? That, that becomes really annoying afterwards? You know, if, if I were, had a really organized mind, I could create eight different links and monitor the eight different links. Um, as it is, I probably am violating the Twitter terms of service, right? Because you're not supposed to repeat any. So I just think if I go from four to eight, you know, that just might be pushing the edge, even for me. So to use the NPR mo uh, metaphor, that would be like NPR having a telethon every week. You know, NPR has a telethon, I think, three or four times a year. That's probably the limit. And I think for me, four times is the limit. You know, I could make the case that w when people complain that they saw my same tweet more than once, I counter them and I say, well, you know, if, if you saw this tweet two or three times, eight hours apart, it means almost by definition, you don't have a life, <laughs> right? Because, I mean, that's pretty sad. If you saw my tweet twice, you were on for 16 hours, that says more about you than me. So uh, usually they shut up after that. Guy, uh, I, I'd like to... Uh move on a little from social media, but I'll get another question. By the way, you can take questions from the room as well. We have a, we have a microphone going uh, around. But uh, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. Give, me, give, me the, give me some advice. Give us some advice. For, these are entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, uh, what's the like, top three advice that, because I know you've, you've had, you had you know, a lot yes, of talks okay. about this. Uh, so I, I happen to love entrepreneurship. I think the, the most important piece of advice I can give you is the most important thing an entrepreneur can do is make a prototype. As opposed to make a PowerPoint pitch, make an Excel projection, or make a Word business plan. The most important thing is to build a prototype. And if you build a prototype and people like it, you may never have to create a pitch, you may never have to create a plan, you may never have to create a forecast. And let's face it, most PowerPoint pitches and plans and forecasts are total bullshit. Right? I mean, Tall. everybody's saying in year five, we're going to be doing roughly $100 million because they figure that if they say $100 million, it's interesting. If they say $500 million, it looks delusional. If you say $25 million, you think you're not interesting enough. So everybody says $100 million. That could be shrimp farming, social media, cure for cancer, whatever it is. They all say that. So number one piece of advice is nothing against Microsoft Office, but the most important thing you could do is make a prototype. That leads to a corollary, which is the most powerful presentation you could make to a potential investor is to show a prototype that is already being used or being consumed or being subscribed to. That beats any, any, any PowerPoint pitch. A demo and you can say 10,000 people are signing up for this per month. Uh, you know, What's the company you invested in that you're most excited about? 
um, with a prototype like that that came. Did you invest in Evernote? Uh, I did not invest in Evernote. I'm an advisor, advice. which is e even more scalable plan, <laughs> if you think about it. Sure. So, okay, so number one piece of advice is prototype. Uh, I would say number two piece of advice, particularly here in Europe, um, that a European entrepreneur's perspective should be to create a product or a service that is so great that the Americans in Silicon Valley want to copy it. Okay? That is very different than saying, I am a French entrepreneur and I'm going to create the French version of eBay or Vine or Snapchat or you know, go down the list. The, the right perspective for an entrepreneur, I believe, anywhere in the world is to create a product or service that is so great that uh, Americans want to copy. Well, and there are a few. I mean, there is Spotify, yeah. there is SoundCloud. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But I think so many entrepreneurs, they look at American models and they say, well, we're going to do the French version of something from Silicon Valley. And that, you're, that, you're that aiming sounds, too low. That sounds like a uh, past to me. I think we yeah? moved okay, on. Great. I think we moved great. on from, from that. The third piece of advice I would give an entrepreneur. By the way, saying this here is going to upset everybody, but it's okay, you know. Why? Like you, you're, like, you're like the American coming here and saying, hey, stop copying the Americans. No, but that's, you see, you're so French. You just took that completely wrong. <laughs> it's so, I mean, <laughs> What the hell, Loic? I mean, I just paid you guys the greatest compliment. You took it as an insult. What is with you French? I don't understand it. What I'm trying to say, this is the most humbling thing an American could say. I am an American saying that you guys could have better ideas than us. So don't limit yourself to the stupid American ideas. Use your own ingenuity. Okay? I got it. Took me... Twice, but okay, I got okay. it. Okay, okay. Well, know. eventually. Um, my third piece of advice is you should never ask anyone to do something that you would not do as an entrepreneur. And, and that means you don't ask your employees to do something you wouldn't do. You don't ask your customers to do something you wouldn't do. You don't ask your vendors to do something. You don't ask your uh, partners to do something you wouldn't do. I think it's a very important test. Um, I think many entrepreneurs, when they get too close to their company, they think, you know, well, we have such a great website, we have such great functionality, we're giving it away for free, so people won't mind filling out 25 fields of information just to get a free account. And if you think about it, you know, you probably wouldn't do that, so why are you asking your customers to do that? I think that's a very important thing. By the way, it's a test that Apple fails every day now, but that's a different subject. But um, I think it's very important that entrepreneurs have that attitude. Do you have a next point? No, the top three, three. Three. I think in threes, tricolon. You know, I came, I saw, I conquered. How about the idea itself? I know you've been talking a lot about yes. that. Like uh, finding an idea. Uh, is, I'm in it right now because I have this uh, little, I mean, I have this event, but I, I like to start businesses too. Yeah. And honestly, I've been trying to, t uh, it's been like a long time that I tell entrepreneurs you should. You should launch as fast as possible. Reid Hoffman of LinkedIn Prototype, uh, right? says, if you are not ashamed of your product, when you launch it, you launch too late, which I think is an mm -hmm. awesome quote. But you know, how, so how, how about the idea itself? If you think about Airbnb, they were not looking for making something like Airbnb. They were in San Francisco. There are no hotel rooms. People needed hotel rooms, and they, they started sharing their own room. That's how Airbnb started. If you, think, if you think about Twitter, it's, it's the same. If you, if you go into the history of Twitter, it starts as you know, they're not looking to make something like Twitter. Yes, Jack yes. just was playing with a service, right? right. So how do, you, how do you, so what's your I, advice I, on finding ideas? Uh, this is some wisdom that I uh, ripped off from Michael Moritz of Sequoia Capital. And uh, he once told me that the richest vein for Sequoia's investments and you know, to say it's the richest vein for Sequoia's investments is saying a lot, right? Because Sequoia has been so successful. And he said the richest vein is two guys, two gals in a garage or a dorm room who are building the product that they want to use. So two guys building a search engine they want to use, two guys, gals building a personal computer they want to use, two guys, gals building a website they want to use. That's the richest vein for Sequoia. And I completely agree with that. And now that is very different from going to a conference, listening to 50-year-old 
white men tell you that this is the future of technology, therefore you should go and build this product. It's completely contrary to that. So the scenario here is you and your buddy in a dorm room, in a bedroom, in a garage, you create the product that you want to use, and then you hope like hell that you're not the only two people in the world who want to use it. And I, I think that that is the richest vein for tech entrepreneurship. Thank you. Any question? Yep. Oh, we had one here. Hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Mohammed Jahwani. Um, I come from Dubai, and my question, are you considering any investments in our region in the Middle East or any involvement, regardless whether be it uh, investments or uh, supporting uh, startups and entrepreneurs in the Middle East with your experience? And the other question, the link in the Facebook for the startup competition doesn't work, so if you can give okay. us another link. I'll fix that right now. Start, I would like to participate. Okay. Thank you. So the question for me is investments in Dubai? Um, involvement. You know, I, 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 have, I am not a very active investor at all right now. Um, I advise a lot of companies, and it's companies that I just happen to fall in love with. It's completely an emotional decision. And um, I, like to, I like to stay relatively involved with the company, and so just the logistics of getting to the Middle East are too difficult for me. I've never been to Dubai, um, so it's hard for me. And you know, uh, speaking as a Silicon Valley person, you know, there's so many ways we can lose money within one hour of where we are. I don't know why we have to go on a plane and lose money you know, 18 hours from where we are. And, and, and that's kind of the issue, that investing, I think, to this day is kind of a local phenomenon. Um, Having said that, you know, just as I said that if you're here, you should have an idea that's not simply a copy of an American idea, I would say the same for you, that um, you have some natural advantages there and should take advantage of that. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think you need to be in Silicon Valley anymore to be successful. I mean, the world truly is flat. Um, Next question. Anyone here? both for you and the previous speaker, uh, is intellectual property at all uh, a factor or is it completely irrelevant and everybody's secret bedfellow? What do you think? <laughs> um, how do I say this without getting in too much trouble? Um, the scenario in which intellectual property might be very valuable for you is if a large company buys you for your intellectual property. Okay? Having said that, um, if I were... Uh, if, if I were sitting across the table from an entrepreneur and, and I brought up the question of def defensibility, and if they said that their defensibility is focused or built upon patents, I would laugh at them. Um, I think the ideal number of times that you use the word patent in a presentation is one, which is you say we have a patent pending. If you wanted to impress most investors, you would say, we have a patent pending. However, we do not believe that it is a key part of our defensibility. The key parts of our defensibility are our aggressiveness, our ability to work hard, our understanding of the market, and our willingness to change in order to make this company successful. Because for most people, the amount of money and time it would take to successfully litigate uh, is, is just to totally irrelevant for a startup. Um, you know, every once in a while you hear a story about, oh, Microsoft was sued by a little company in, you know, wherever. They're a little company in Calabasas, California, and sued Microsoft, and Microsoft lost $50 million in this lawsuit. And the reason why you read a story like that is because it never happens. It is news. And so if, if you were to go to your investors and say, well, our business model is we're going to create this technology and then a large technology company is going to copy us and we're going to sue them successfully, that is our business model, you probably won't get funded. Um, I think the key is to create a company and make it scale. And you're an investor yourself. Yes. How do we get you to invest in those guys? Um, How do I contact you to uh, get you to invest? My email is guy at motorola.com. It's a very easy email to remember. 
Um, I, I try to invest in things that I would use, basically. So, for example, Buffer. I use Buffer every day. I use Evernote every day. Um, so those are the kinds of things. I don't know a thing about enterprise software. I don't know a thing about life sciences. Um, so then you don't invest. If I someone don't invest. Shows up with yeah, an Excel I, I like to lose money in things I understand. Um, I, so, I so, love so, so, social so media. So let's take this upside down. What is, what is it that you need that doesn't exist yet? So we build it. Uh, I'm kind of a happy guy right now. I, I, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, but th this, there's actually a deeper question than what you just said, which is, you know, can you always identify a need for a tech startup? And the answer to that is no, because in many cases, the need appeared afterwards. And this is something that Apple does particularly well, right? They create a product and they either anticipated a need or they created the need after the fact. But there was no demonstrable need at the time. And that is a key part of entrepreneurship. So uh, to, for me sitting here... You mean people sometimes start things that we don't need and that's why they fail. They invent the problem, right? It's well, a very common tech... I, th think to do I that. think they do that, but, you know, but that's also the vein for a very successful company also. Mm. That if, like right now, if you, if you only, I suppose you could say, well, there's a real big need for better batteries. Okay? I mean, it's kind of obvious. Better batteries would be really great, right? But there must be 500 companies working on that. There is a demonstrated need for that. Would I do that right now? Probably not. Um, I'd, I'd much rather... Two of you in some garage or some dorm or some apartment or some spare bedroom be creating something that I have no idea I need. But then when I see it, I just fall in love. I mean, that's like I, the first time I used Google Plus, I fell in love, right? It was like no need. I didn't need another way to express myself. I didn't need another social media platform. I already had Twitter. I had Facebook. I had all this stuff. Did I need Google Plus? Not at all. But I just fell in love with Google Plus. So that I doesn't wanna, make any sense, guy. I want to fall in love. What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing. We are in Paris. Yeah, right. And, uh, <laughs> we, we had two participants, Michael Schneider and Kate, you know, if they are here. I want to take them on stage, get them on stage, because they met here a few years ago, and they got engaged two days ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's what the web does. So nothing wrong with that. Are you getting 10% of them? Of a wedding? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> any question? Save me. Yes, thank you. Good morning, Camilo Zacconi from the Bajan Web Community. Guy, what would you say to an entrepreneur if his potential investors tell him, you need to move closer where is my fund and live where you are living? What would be your advice for him? What? Could you? Yeah, your advice for? For an entrepreneur, to... if his investor is telling him, you need to move in the country where is the fund. Where is the? The fund, the money. Where is the? The cash. The cash. <laughs> okay, uh, you got uh, that? Is this a prospective investor or a current investor? Prospective investor, indeed. Okay, so someone shows up with $10 million uh, and tells you, you need to move to San Francisco or I won't give you a $10 million. I would, what, what do you say? You move I would not? look for other investors. Really? Yeah. I think that... Um, I think that, you know, if for technology, well, you can ask Fred what he would do, but I think for a technology investor, when you fall in love and you find something that's great and you believe in it, it could be the next Google, Cisco, Yahoo, Twitter, Facebook, you know, something like that. It's not a matter of making them move to where you are. You either fall in love or not. I mean, it, I keep using this love analogy, but I think it's very apt that, you know, if you are here in Paris and you're from San Francisco and you fall in love, truly fall in love, you'll try to make it work. If you meet a woman here, although you could be gay, I'm not anti-gay, but if you meet a man or a woman and you fall in love, I don't think you say to the person, I will continue our relationship if you move to where I am. That's not love. And so I think that is an inappropriate question. Now, there is a middle ground where you say, okay, so you fall in love with a company. It's in Paris. 
you're from Silicon Valley. You don't want to make an investment that requires a 11-hour trip all the time, right? So you say, okay, so you keep your programmers in Paris, but you create a Delaware corporation, and you have a West Coast headquarters. I can understand that. That's the Israeli model, right? Nobody, Israelis create Delaware corporations, and they move to Silicon Valley. So I think that's a middle ground. But to say, um, if you move, we will give you money, I think that is a very dubious pitch. Next question. Anyone? Otherwise, I always have questions. Yes, thank you. Oh, and here, and here next. Oh, it's fantastic. Thanks again for your comments. Uh, my question is about women. I know when it comes to the technology platform, there's a neutrality of gender, but given the number of organizations or companies being founded by women, how do you see that as an investment? Because there's so much conversation coming up in media about the Twitter boards and Facebook boards and all these companies' boards. Love to know your points yeah, on um, uh, women. You know, I think it's so hard to make a successful technology company that if you limit yourself to men only, you just make it so much harder. I just don't understand the logic. Um, I, I, I think you... you you should be gender blind, race blind, sexual orientation blind. You should be even nationalistic blind. I mean, it's so hard to do a company. Why would you set up these artificial barriers? I do not. It is like just stupid to me that you would do such a thing. Uh, it's so hard. Uh, so I would, I don't care what gender you are. I don't care what religion, orientation, whatever you are. Just show me a great freaking prototype. That's all I care about, really. Next question. We had a question over there. Uh, where is one? I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I have to ask you, Louis. You see that guy over there with the like 27-inch iMac? Is he like a blogger? That's his laptop. What? Is, what's with him? <laughs> No, he's a photographer. Oh. He's uh, one of our uh, most loyal friends. Oh, How many say. LeWebs have you been to? Seven LeWebs. Really? <laughs> yeah. You spent 21 grand? <laughs> <laughs> we, we help bloggers and okay, photographers. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like your comment, by the way. <laughs> and uh, solve a... We have a question there. Yes. Thank you, guys. Would you like my? Uh, would you like to stay and just host it? Uh, sure. I think you're doing great. Well, I'd be glad to. <laughs> next year. What am I going to do How next year? How about that? Next, next year. year. Next. <laughs> my wife. My wife told me last night we should come every year for this. Yeah. yeah. Careful. You're <laughs> 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 How about this? Next year, and you know, very very few people that uh, can witness this. But next year, I'd like you to come and have your own session, like your own, like two hours or three hours, where you invite yeah. anyone you want. How about that? I'd love to do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. I'm going to change hotel, though. The hotel is not good? Well, the, you know, this hotel that you put me in, I, I, I promise you, Louis. No, I swear. Okay, no, no. No, seriously. No, I, go ahead. Like, no, no, please. no, no. I mean, I, and we'll I, get back to the question. I, I'm going to come to you. I, I'm We're not cheap. Like, We're I'm cheap. not like some 24-karat asshole, okay? And I, but the bath towel is literally this big. <laughs> it cannot cover me, Louis. I just... <laughs> Yeah, this, it's this big. How many of you are, are you, you're in the Marriott, right, Jeremiah? How big is the bath towel? <laughs> I, I must be in the wrong room. Guy, by the way, I'd like to say I'm staying at the same hotel as you. And your bath towel is bigger than I, this? I think you didn't see that there's another one uh, on the other side. No? Okay. I, Maybe I'm using the floor bath. Any, <laughs> 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 Any other complaint? No, well, really? no. Other than that, I'm a happy man. I will make sure you have a very large towel uh, towel tonight. Uh, yeah, I, many of them. The towels are heated, but they're small. I just what Other can than I that's say? a good experience. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, you know, I'm easy to please. I, uh, yeah, I was expecting much more, so no, that's good. See? If it's only the towel, we'll it's fix that. It's only the towel, really. It's only the towel. <laughs> very good. Great. And uh, by the way, your wife uh, is, uh, is 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 fantastic. If she gives you comments like that, that she wants to come back every year to Paris, that's our trick to get. She also back. wants a bigger towel. 
But okay. Next year we'll bring our own towels. How's okay. okay. Uh, no. No. We'll we'll get you a towel. Uh, please. Uh, Great. See, like, Thank you. A thousand people just tweeted guys complaining about the towels at Le Web. Right? Yeah, you're not helping your reputation here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I don't know both. <laughs> there's the there's a new trending hashtag, small towels. Right? Small towels. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yes. Great. Thank that was interesting. Uh, Louis, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> No, we'd like to keep talking about towels. If Let, you don't let's mind. not. Let's okay. not. Congratulations, 10th anniversary, Louis. Um, one of my favorite conferences, Le Web is. Thank you. For Guy, so you, uh, just following up from the question from the guy from Dubai. So you say, you know, flying to Dubai, I think from the States, about our, what, 10 hour flight to Dubai to go and lose money when you could lose it quickly at home or whatever. But don't you think that's a lost opportunity, especially with emerging markets? So I'm from South Africa. And it's a great emerging market in Africa right now uh, when it comes to technology. And I think the, the speaker before, uh, Fred Wilson, said like the developing world is kind of leapfrog desktop into mobile now. Yes. And they're doing amazing stuff. I mean, a company called Brick just founded this internet connector that lets you connect to the internet no matter where you are, hopping from network to network. Don't you think it's a lost opportunity rather than um, we're too lazy to go to the yes, rest of yes. the world? Yes, yes, okay. So, no doubt what I just said creates a loss, a potential for loss opportunity. No question about it. Having said that, from the investor's perspective, it's very difficult. For example, let's take your country. I have no idea about the corporate finance laws of your country. I don't know if you can offer options. I don't know if there's an IPO. I don't know anything about it. And so, you, you know, the, the typical investor looks at 10,000 opportunities a year and invest in 20, right, or something like that. And so, so along comes one that says, okay, so now I have to understand South African law. I have to, under, I have to go to a board meeting that's 30 hours away. I, have to, I mean, it's just you're, you're adding speed bumps, not necessarily blockades, but you're adding speed bumps to your deal. And so... All things being equal, it's kind of hard to do that. So you need to make it easier because, after all, you're asking for the money, right? And so you have to make it easier for the investor to write a check. Uh, but you are absolutely correct that there could be the next Google inside South Africa and an American investor would not see it because of what I just said. There's no question you're right. Guy, I would keep this going for hours. And we're actually keeping you going. Uh, you're, you're, doing a, you're doing a special session meet guy right now yes. in another room, yes. which I will disclose uh, where it is. It's on the second floor in this building here. Uh, for those of you who are uh, physically in the room, because we have a live stream, so I, I always forget the live stream. <laughs> you cannot meet guy with a live stream, uh, unfortunately, yet. You'll have to come physically for that. And it's, the room is called London, and you will, uh, you will go there right now? Well, and also, um, uh, can I make a plug? Please. The oh, is that a... Um, yeah. So you're selling something now. I'm selling something. We Actually, I'm giving it away. So my most current book is a book called Ape. It stands for, stands for Author, Publisher, Entrepreneur. So it's how to self-publish a book. For example, Robert Scobo used it. And so um, there are people someplace in here, and I have about 1,500 of these cards. So if you get this card, there's a promo code on the back where you get this book for free. So if you ever thought about self-publishing and writing a book, this is a book. So, and to you help get you. the book for free? Yes, you get the book for free. So what, what kind of marketing is that for you? You're trying to see uh, how much conversion rate you no, have from this? No, I just. You know, I just, I love these kind of tech audiences, and I figure maybe very you invite me back. And I, and I have to give one more plug to somebody. So there's a woman sitting over there, Haley Sweet Tucker, and without her, I would have never started self-publishing. So she is the mother of Ape, if you will. So. Yes, and Haley is a great, great friend as well. So, thank you very much. No, thank I you, I guess guys. I'll see you next year. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we just made that deal, I, it looks like. Uh, yeah. So, I really hope, yeah. I remember I, the towels. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will personally make sure to get the towels. <laughs> Guy, it's, thank been, you very it's much. been a pleasure. I'm very frustrated we have to end this. But uh, we have Evernote that you were just talking about, and then Uber, and then the, the chef, Ferran Oh, Adria. I love Uber, it's yes. Like, yeah, yeah. So, 
Guy, you are going right now to this room, London, second, um, second okay. floor, and you're staying here, which is amazing. People can meet you and talk to you and ask you more advice. Okay. And uh, we will see you next year. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Guy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.